Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy, not the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales. We're still at Mahakam, just after we've uh, well badly wounded Keltulis, the humongous red dragon that uh, had a deal with the dwarves up until now, but for some reason attacked this little village over here, the Hag's Pit. Okay then. Trust a bohead and what do you get? A singed bahuki. Brown, red, gold. Every dragon's a right bastard. Well, that's your opinion Wait, now. I'm coming with you. Gonna beat that scaly bastard so hard he'll shoot fire out his ass. Indeed he will. So there we have another recruit. Um, so the dragon is to the north. Let's check out the map. Because I've seen that the dragon is actually depicted really nicely on the map. Oh. That must be it. Uh, but like, there's there's a big red dragon over here as well. So if you check that out, look at that. A humongous red dragon. So let's head towards that point of interest then first. Because I have a feeling that that's the lair of Keltulis. Because uh, he said up to the north. And we have an extra shrine to just boost our uh, morale up to the maximum here. So yeah, here we go. Giant cavern. Keltulis's pit. Keltulis' lair was indeed impossible to miss, as would stand to reason, for any space capable of containing a dragon must be enormous. The lair's moor, a black triangle cut out of a vast plain of snow, loomed from afar. Confirming the dragon's presence was the powerful odor emanating from it, one of sulfur and blood. Well then, Gascon said, ready to become a legendary dragon slayer? Oh, hell yes we are. Enter the dragon's lair. My father off said, never should you count pelts till the hunt is through. Meave said, dismounting her horse. It's all the more true when you hunt dragons. He's wounded, yes, but one puff of flame and we shall be not legends but corpses. Leave all thoughts of foolhardy bravery behind. The Lyrians crept across the dragon's threshold. They walked single file, shields raised, watched by bats hanging from the ceiling. Keltilis lay curled up on a bed of diamonds and gold coins turned red from his blood. Seeing how he strained merely to lift his massive head, Meave knew the dragon no longer posed any threat. Come to finish what your poison began? <sighs> The monster croaked hoarsely. Fine. Do it then. Catalyst okay. turned over, exposing his vulnerable underbelly, and waited calmly for the fatal blow. Okay, I'm guessing Egg has an idea about this. Kill the dragon or talk to Keltulis. Poison. What your poison began. So he was poisoned by someone. That's... I want to know. I am I mean, I really want to know. Even if we lose Egg because of this. I want to know. I really want to know. Wait. Meave said, dropping her sword. What poison? <laughs> Keltilis laughed while squeezing his bleeding side in pain. So they didn't tell you? Lousy munchkins. <sighs> hey! Watch your tongue! Gabor yelled. Sides! I didn't care anything about it! Keltilis looked the Lyrians over mistrustfully with his snake-like eyes, then began to tell his tale. The caravan Meave had met on the road was different to the others. This time, Keltilis's meat had been pickled in a special brine, one spiked with poison. As the dragon lay curled up in pain, Ferenc dwarves entered his lair and smashed his legs. So if I understand correctly... Meave interrupted. You're female. Correct. Same as you. Well, not entirely the same, but I get what he's talk she's talking as about. If on command, all Lyrian eyes turned to Gabor. Can you look at me? We didn't peek under his uh, heart. Uh, it's... Deal. If I may, Reynard interjected. These revelations about Keltilis' sex are undeniably fascinating. But I'm more curious why the Ferences stooped to such a dishonorable deed. That's easy enough to guess, Meave said. They were afraid the dragon would soon demand more tribute to feed its young. 
so they decided to strike preemptively. A wise and noble deed, Ake cried. Evil must always be nipped in the bud. To the Ferenc's misfortune, they delivered two smaller doses of poison. Infuriated at the sight of the broken eggs, the dragon gathered its strength and flew to the nearest town. Meave saw for herself what happened then. And now it was up to her to decide how this story would end. The dragon had killed dozens, perhaps even hundreds, but had been provoked first by the dwarf's heartless cruelty. Did it thus deserve death or mercy? Ah, I knew it was going to come to this, of course, but just really rationally here, we will not gain anything if we let Keltulis heal and leave Mahakam. Maybe we get the treasure, but I feel like we won't. And the dwarves would be very angry. I'm also 100% sure that if we do not kill the dragon, we lose Egg. However, if we do kill the dragon, we might actually get uh, Isbel. We might actually lose Isbel. I feel like profit-wise, it's probably wisest to kill it. We will get our share of the treasure. We will have appeased the clan that we're at right now, the Ferences. And we keep egg. So those three things are what make me decide to actually kill the dragon. I'm so sorry. I understand your pain, Meave said. But nothing can justify the massacre you wrought. Nothing? And what would you have done in my place? Snorted the dragon. Pen a letter of complaint to Elder and Chief Oak. They killed my children! <laughs> I'd have done the same, the Queen replied, not hesitating a moment. I'd have sought revenge, knowing what punishment I'd earn. The monster looked Meave in the eyes a long while, then dropped its head. I have no more strength to fight. I have no more reason to fight. Do as you see fit. Damn, this does not make it easier. Change your mind and spare it. Oh, for fuck's sake. No, no. I will not change my mind. I'm gonna commit to my decision. I do commend the game for giving me another choice, but no, I'm gonna kill the wounded dragon. Eve raised her sword high and swept it down with enormous strength, cutting the scaled belly in twain. The monster bellowed out a long roar and writhed its tail, scattering diamonds everywhere. Then grew still. Keltalis, the last red dragon between the Great Sea and the Fiery Mountains, had breathed his last. Oh yeah, add, add to it that it's the, the very last red dragon. Thank you. There Thank you. a strange silence. No one cheered. No one clapped. Only Ake whispered a prayer of thanks under his breath. That was... Gascon said, the first to break the silence. Not terribly epic. What'd you expect? <laughs> Gabor said, arms akimbo. Fanfare and fireworks. The mountain to quake. He up and died. What else would he do? I am certain, Your Grace, Reynard said, that the poets will endow this moment with the appropriate splendor. I'm sure they will, the Queen said, sheathing her sword. For they are liars. Indeed they are. There's no glory in what we just did, but it's a hard decision to make. Keltalus Trophy. Does that mean that that's a better... I don't know why the resolution is so crappy, but let's claim the queen it. Told her soldiers to gather Might be a, a better Manticore Trophy. Small enough not to bring down the wrath of Bruva Hoog, but large enough to fully compensate the Lyrian's losses. And Meave gained the title of Dragon Slayer, though she rarely made much mention of it. Hmm. <laughs> Meave Dragon Slayer. It does have a nice ring to it. But yeah, this was not... Holy hell. I think we got about 10,000 gold there. It's it's enough. Let's check out the trophy. That is one sad reminder of what we just did. Every three turns on turn start, damage all enemies on the melee row by two. Interesting. That is really powerful. If not to say enormously powerful. Every three turns. 
That is... Hmm... That seems better than the Manticore Trophy, but of course if we remove the Manticore Trophy, we don't have any use for Egg. That is interesting. So the Manticore Trophy it is what makes Egg stronger. If you kill Kaltulis, you keep Egg, but get a trophy that's actually better than the Manticore Trophy. But you wouldn't be using the Kaltulis Trophy because the Manticore Trophy is still better in combination with Egg. That is so weird. It's like the game doesn't want you to benefit from killing Keltullus. Okay, so I'm gonna keep him just in the inventory. That's our second trophy uh, in quick succession, because last time we got uh, the horn we could use as a trophy. But yeah, that was probably one of the bigger decisions we made so far. But I'm not exactly happy about it, to be honest. Uh, so let's head into the next village, Drunken Bluff. And we get a cinematic. Well, just a cinematic camera movement. Leaves squinted, the better to see the scene. Several dozen dwarves had gathered on the cliff overlooking the chasm. All were turned towards a ramp, at the peak of which stood a barrel. What is that gathering about? Asked the queen. Have we a feast day? Nay, answered Gabor grimly. It is an execution. Okay. A hairy head peeked out of the barrel. The long, pointy nose and ears left no doubt that it belonged to a gnome. The first Meave had ever seen in her life. Help! Save me! The gnome yelled. They aim to kill me! Cast me in the chasm! Shut your maw! Barked the dwarf standing next to him, who then shoved the gnome inside the barrel and covered it with a lid. Your crimes! The sheer weight of him, hey! No lighter punishment is fitting! The other gathered dwarves nodded approvingly. Two gripped the barrel, lay it on its side, then lifted it to cast in the chasm, paying the thumping from inside it no heed. Um, uh, um, um, uh, let's intervene. Meave leapt from her horse, and ignoring Gabor's objections, scrambled up the ramp. Oi! You're not allowed! Hey, damn it! What do you think you're doing? I think it's obvious. Preventing the execution. Ah, ah, thanks be to the gods! Whoa, wench, you have no such right. Judgment's been handed down. Sentencing's done. Yes, and a cruel sentence it is. One that prompts me to wonder what the accused did to deserve it. <laughs> Better to ask what he didn't he do, the varmint. Arrived here with his peddler's wagon full of tricks and gadgets. Went from house to house, praised his rubbish to the high heavens. And what's it he sold us? Bombs that go off in your hand. Beard growth formula that makes your hair catch fire. Music boxes for the kiddies. Once cranked, they never plow in stop. You needed but to loosen the screw in the back and... Shut your maw, ye roaster. Doesn't it matter all that? Because we'd have forgiven it if he hadn't broken our sacred rules and hallowed customs. Which ones, if you don't mind me asking? Enter the smithy, cap on his head, held nails between his teeth, and poured fruit syrup in his beer. Raspberry! Pleh. Just the ones, and but a few drops. You got nothing to explain your villainy, scoundrel. Not a thing. So wait, he's guilty of putting some syrup in his beer? And that's not even the worst. Saved his highest crime for the end. He was in a mine. And oh. he whistled. <laughs> oh, God. We heard about the strict rules and ridiculous guidelines that the dwarves need to live by. But this is... Well, I'm speechless. Oh, oh that's bad. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Oh, the dry response. Hi, he did. Whistled through his teeth and hummed in harmony a, a long warble. We all heard it up and down the shaft, and our grand elders were clear. Death's the punishment. Death by barrel roll. Look at Neve's face again. The just the 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 well not the horror, just the the surprise, the shock on her face. Um the punishment's cruel and unusual, not commensurate to the crime. Can you recite the exact structure he broke? 
do what you must to what your laws require. May I buy his freedom? Um, could buy his freedom, actually. Can you recite the exact stricture he broke? I'm not gonna risk it. I, I wanna see who's inside here. Your land, your laws, I shall not argue with them. But perhaps there is another way. Can a bail be posted? Hmm. Well, the law does allow for something of the sort. But I don't see how that job is worth it. Oh, I. He is. He is. Willing I am to take him at his word. Does that suffice? Aye. But just so we're clear. No returns, no refunds. Now get the hell out of that barrel, you wee shite. My lady, I haven't a way to thank you. He looks horrible. Barnabas. That we've yet to discuss. Perhaps first we should learn each other's names? Um, aye, yes, uh, of course. Oh, what a prat of me. Uh, Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas Beckenbauer. Uh, to friends, Bibi. Bibi? Like doo doo. With that Bibi. Okay. Meave. Queen of Lyria and Rivia. A co queen? Cows in the corn, tell me on it. Uh, your Majesty. Obeisance due. None necessary. Protocols for use at court, not beyond it. An inventor you deem yourself. Am I right? Most assuredly. Though, truth be told, the dwarves saw no ingenuity in my craft. <laughs> Seems I'm ahead of my time. Fiery bursts in the palm of your hand. They shall be in fashion one day to your mind. Fiery bursts in the palm of your hands. Is she talking about smartphones? Oh, me! <laughs> Nay, no, just a bit of misfortune, that's all that was. You, you see, I mistook Mercury Fulminate for Saltpeter. The vials stood beside each other, see, and... The details I need not know. But one matter I am curious about. Could you construct a bomb that would explode when desired? For instance, beneath my foe's feet as they stepped over it? Well, of course I can! It's as simple. Why then? You wish to show your gratitude? You must join my ranks. Assist me to defeat Nilfgaard. D defeat Nilfgaard? <sighs> Pure ambition, that is. But I'd have been a barrel of broken bones at the bottom of a ravine, if not for you. I'll do what you ask to pay off my debt. He looks really evil for some reason, but uh, Barnabas Backenbauer. And thus, for the first time in Lyrian annals, a gnome enlisted with the army. And though Barnabas Beckenbauer was diminutive of body, this new recruit would prove his worth on more than one occasion. Ooh, that's nice. Get a bit of a teaser out of the sizzlixer into the fire. Okay, we're racking in the trophies uh, lately. I'm just gonna check him out. So, new character means new card. He only needs six. Create a trinket. Spawn one of three randomly chosen. <laughs> so, spawn one of three randomly chosen cards from a specified faction and from neutral guards unless otherwise specified. Okay. We can just add them to the deck, actually. There we go. Remove the Sightman and the Aretuza Adept until we have more space again. So uh, there we go, Barnabas Beckenbauer added to the deck. And of course, new character also means new conversation options, so hello Barnabas. Your Majesty, allow me once again to express my undying gratitude. You're most welcome, Barnabas, but please, we haven't need for any formalities when speaking alone. I, uh, well, well of course, uh, how might I help you then? I like to know, no, I must know who I travel with. Please do tell me about yourself. About me? <laughs> um, I've most civil relations with dwarves, <laughs> as you saw. Uh, but um, is there anything in particular you'd like to know? Why not start at the beginning? Tell me where you hail from, perhaps. Oh, right, right. Uh, well, uh, I was born in the distant south, in Tia Tokhaya. My mother was a washerwife, my father an armorer. Soon as I'd passed 40 winters and could strike out on my own, I left the family, my native parts. So I've been on the road now about, um, oh, 20 odd years. Indeed, a rather long while. 
Did the South simply not suit you? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. It's just staying would have meant stepping into my father's shoes. Then forging blade after blade, plate after plate. Oh, just thinking on it sets my head a spinning. Not for me that, no. No, nature. The world so rich in mysteries, in wonders left to discover, and ways to make it a better place. By building bombs that explode in the hand, for instance. Ah, as those bearded fellas say, Mahakam wasn't he built in a day. <laughs> Besides, uh, nobody was seriously hurt by those malfunctions. Not many at any rate. Not many at any rate. Okay, Barnabas. So, what are you working on right now? At the moment, have you any invention you've worked on? One that's near complete? Oh, so kind. So wonderful, you should ask. See, I've, uh, I've ever had an avian fascination. Uh, for birds, you see. Their wings, bones. The structure's perfect. The aerodynamicism, the, the, the plumage. In short, I believe I can fly. I beg your pardon? I believe I can fly. Yes. Yes, I, I'm learning to fly. 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 You've not misheard. I, Barnabas Beckenbauer, will be the first norm... Oh, what am I saying? The first mammal to free himself of the soil's bondage and soar to the clouds. I'd like to see that. That, that little fat gnome mm. flying. But aren't... Um Bats also. Ha! <laughs> a detail! This is no time to be petty. No, but frankly, my preparations are far advanced, and I'm rather optimistic about my design and prospects. I've calculated every trajectory, every force, it all works out. Just need to do a few more field tests. Okay. You've actually put this to the test. Did you have volunteers try it, or did you test the design yourself? Naturally, I must stay on the ground. Who take all the measurements elsewise? Uh, luckily, there's no lack of thrill seekers in Mahaka. More eager to etch themselves into the annals. I'm starting to regret saving your ass. So you've been sending dwarves down the mountain with, a, with fake wings. My first prototype, the Sky Licker, I dubbed it. Oh, your majesty, if you'd only seen the beauty. Flew over a hundred and twenty L's. Truly? Colour me impressed indeed. Must have made quite the name for himself, your brave volunteer. I'm certain he's caught the eye of every she dwarf in Mahakam since. I think he's dead. Oh no, he's dead. Uh, the, the landing, it was rough. And then a bear sauntered by. Uh, didn't help him. Uh, anyhow, as he died, the dwarf swore he regretted nothing. Brave lad. A bit daft, though. <laughs> oh, never mind, I like Barnabas. <clears throat> I see. But the next time you request I try one of your inventions, I'd ask you to remind me of this touching tale. Okay, so thank you, Barnabas. Time I attended to other matters. So that is ah, that. Yes, you're still here. Off you go, then. Okay, he wasn't paying attention. So that means we are good to go. <sighs> A damn shame. What with such good visibility today, too. Oh, he's sad that he didn't see the gnome fly off in the distance. You change your mind, last. let me know, eh? Got the barrel ready and waiting. I thought there were no <laughs> refunds. <laughs> well... Okay, there we go. So, uh, with our new companion in tow, let's just keep going. Every year more monsters crawl out for spring cleaning. There we go, another little village with a few recruits. Remember. Pass a snail on route to the mine. Share a wee bite with him. Okay then. Never, ever whistle in the mines. Yeah, we, we know that now. Hold on. Pour you some hooch first. Makes for merrier marching when things get frosty. Ah, we would have got morale. Okay. Yeah, that's sad. Didn't get anything from that. But the notice board will show us the way. Seems like we have a battle down there. So that's where we're going to head next. The blizzard's blowing in. Your Grace, perhaps we'd best pitch camp and wait for clear weather. Didn't a bad idea. Said we might be waiting a week. Then we march on. We've no time to waste. While we ride to and fro begging aid, Nilfgaard grows in power. 
We must obtain reinforcements as quickly as possible and liberate our home. So there we go, a blizzard. Which, well, we got another uh, shrine over here, but we don't need it since we got full morale. So let's do this. Kill this fork tail? Looks like a fork tail. There we go. Death from above. The dwarves of Mahakam often keep their eyes trained skyward for two reasons. First, to watch for avalanches. Second, to ensure no hungry fork tails or slizzards are swooping down for a quick bite. So a standard battle, but against monsters, so if we can get egg, yep, there he is, all the better. Okay, and we get two eggs, and stuff is spawning because of the Manticore trophy, great. Um, let's start off with a Lydian assignment. A time to reap, a time and then to sow. use Meath to, to put a cart ah! up front, and I think I'm just gonna start easy with... A, is the Wagenberg Blitz? No. With maybe a Lydian Arbalest? Or the drummer? A drummer, an extra drummer, just an extra drummer. Here we go. So pretty much the same thing as usual, I suppose. Spawn a Harpy Egg on each side of this unit. After four turns on turn start, consume the lowest unit on the battlefield. Fair enough. Seems pretty straightforward. So first drummer on the field. Again and, again and, again. and on the turn. And the slizzards. It's just damaging units, so that's fine. And biting frost, which is also gonna benefit the egg. Yeah, let's use Meave to get an Arbalest out ah! by force. So just uh, an Arbalest. And use the drummer to get that Arbalest out of the deck. Oh, and we get two. We get two, Give so that means time. we can actually take out the Forktail. And there we go. Another four, and that goes the Forktail. I need to play another card now, sadly. So let's just... Yeah, keep playing into the damage. The white of an eye. And kill the three Harpies. There we go. And the third. He's gonna pass, I'm presuming. Yeah, there we go. And we get two more damage dealers. And another six damage, which is fine. So, in these kinds of battles, the skull is going to be really, really handy. Because, of course, we have already 11 units in our graveyard now. Okay, Gabor, another forager. And this seems fine. So, I might actually play this out. Just want to see what happens. Yeah, just put the Grey Rider down. Out loops. And end the turn. We don't have a drummer. Blood, look at five cards from your deck and play two. And discard the others. I don't have anything with charge at the moment, so I might as well... Hmm. I have the Lyrian Merlot. But it might actually be better just to pass this turn. I know I wasted my uh, Grey Rider, but... You know what, let's just play this along just for a little bit. And use oh, the Forager. There we go. Uh, don't see... Although, it's strengthened by tree, so I might as well just choose what I get in my hand next time. So let's get Isbel there. And end the turn. Uh, I haven't used the trinket yet. Um, left hook or bottomless pockets. Could waste. I think I'm going to waste cards if I do anything here. So might as well just. Do I use the forager and then just pass? I'm going to lose my manticore trophy if I do that. And this is not a trinket but a trophy. So I don't want to get rid of it that easily. So. You know what, just so I can use it later again, I'm going to use the commander's horn and act like that. And then the turn. There we go. And that just keeps going, of course, so let's pause.
giving us a bit more damage. Nothing too spectacular, but at least we're getting Egg up to really, really enormous heights. There we go, Isbel. And another Grey Rider. I would like, I would have liked another, uh... Yeah, another drummer, but that's not gonna happen. Uh, let's just put the Grey Rider yes. down. And the turn. Yeah, let's just use Egg and just smack God it. Blasted. There we go. Breastplate. 20 damage. And the turn. Um... Well, well, well then, I just keep getting damaged, so... What to do about that? I could actually use Gabor. Put him over right. here as well. That's no problem. And play a trinket from my deck, which is the Lyrian Merlot. There we go. And that boosts the Wagenberg up to that. I should be fine. That's not going to do any damage, which is fine. Then I can replay a trinket if I want to. Mm. Let's just give the, the Wagenberg an extra Life charge. Now here I'm and let him boost proud. further. Uh, and then I can use me Warhammer for no other reason than to just do it, I think. Yeah, there's no reason to do it, but... Boost out by the number of other units on the row and damage an enemy by that same amount. That was two. Two. You just boosted by two. That was... That was bad. Really bad. Uh, let's redeploy a trinket from the graveyard. Because we could so actually just exactly replay the Lillian Merlot. There we go. Boosting, 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 boosting. And then might as well do the... The two damage. Right over there, and on the turn. So there we go. Then put Isbel on the field. Because we've taken a lot of damage. Why did I put it over there? Shouldn't have done that. Definitely shouldn't have done that. Yeah, of course they're going for Isbel, but she's not dead yet. So that means we can use her once. Whammo! 180 points spread out between every one of those. Then I can use me, but not gonna do anything. So let's just use Reynard. We must trust each other. And deploy her again. There we go. That's 355. Oh yeah, because it resets. Yeah, it resets. Okay, so that didn't do anything. Okay, that's sad, because we never did that twice already. So there goes Isbel, no biggie. Egg still gets boosted, of course. And then we can use the Skull to do 16 damage on that entire row by killing off everything in our graveyard. Glamo! Goodbye! 350 points! And yeah, that's not gonna do anything about that. 347 points. Victory, of course. Isbel is ridiculous when we have uh, a bit of damage piled up. That was awesome. Uh, let's grab all that. Let's grab all that. That's very, very welcome. And there is something at the end here, like a mine or something. Might just be something we can check out. Your Majesty, a she dwarf hides in this mine, according to Gabor. Gabor? I keep s saying it weird. Her name is Stanka Moran. A renegade and thief sought by every clan. So Moran indeed is also a name that's familiar. We could dispatch a few guards, but if we let her go, she's promised us to show us where to find buried treasure of extraordinary value. What shall we do? Agree to her terms. Freedom in exchange for riches. There we go, that's a big shack, and we lose all morale, but there's a shrine right outside, so let's just pray at that. So there we go, back to neutral morale, which is fine. And then I think I'm gonna take a little break in this blizzard. So thank you guys enormously for watching, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and next time we'll just head further up the mountain. So thanks enormously for watching, and hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye!